Case 72, Anna Mustafa versus City of Chicago. We find ourselves in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit. Facts, which are quite lengthy. Anna Mustafa is a 56-year-old American citizen of Palestinian descent and Muslim faith. On December 28, 2001, just three months after the attacks of 9-11, Mustafa received word that her father had died in Israel. That afternoon, Mustafa arrived at the Swiss Air ticket counter at O'Hare, intending to fly to Tel Aviv by way of Zurich, Switzerland, to attend her father's funeral. Mustafa was accompanied to the counter by 19 members of her immediate family. Mustafa ordered a Muslim meal for the flight. Moments later, the Swiss Air clerk took Mustafa to a bomb detection machine to have her two pieces of luggage inspected for weapons. Mustafa suspected that this was an instance of discriminatory religious or ethnic profiling. Following the inspection, Mustafa complained about her treatment to a Swiss Air manager, Mohammad Kadir who offered to escort her to the gate because the screening was complete. During this exchange, Mustafa was screaming and the area was crowded. Mustafa realized that security personnel had failed to inspect her purse. She did not realize that carry-on bags would be screened at another checkpoint. And she was concerned that if Swiss Air later realized it had not checked the purse, she would be delayed and missed her flight. Mustafa tried to point out that her purse had not been inspected, saying, You already checked my luggage. Maybe I have a bomb in my purse. Nobody has checked that. In response to the word bomb, an employee working at a nearby United Airlines counter began to yell that she had heard the B word and that security would, should be called. Another manager, Mauricio Perar Anda, called the police to report an unruly passenger saying the word bomb. Within two to three minutes, defendant officer Susan Schober arrived and observed what she later described as a commotion. Kadir informed her that Mustafa had made a statement like, maybe I have a bomb in my purse. Officer Schober, Kadir, Mustafa, and one of Mustafa's sons, Murad Mustafa, spent 20 to 30 minutes in conversation that focused on calming Mustafa down so that she could get on the flight to Zurich. Following this conversation, Defendant Sergeant Golick and Officer Burke arrived and asked Officer Schrober if she had checked Mustafa's purse. Since the answer was no, the two new officers checked the purse, shouting abusively at Mustafa. Sergeant Golick placed Mustafa under arrest. Mustafa, her son Murad, and Sergeant Golik engaged in a screaming argument during which Sergeant Golik insulted Mustafa's family and made a racist reference to the 9-11 terrorist attacks three months earlier. Mustafa spent two days in jail before being released on a $50,000 bond. She missed her father's funeral. Mustafa was indicted on a charge of felony disorderly conduct. Bomb threat pursuant to 72 Illinois statutes, but acquitted following a bench trial. After Mustafa was acquitted, she filed the instant suit against the city of Chicago and four police officers, which originally contained seven counts. Several claims, including all those stated against the city, were dismissed. The defendant police officers moved for summary judgment on the surviving counts false arrest and violation of Mustafa's right to equal protection under the law, pursuant to 18 U.S. Code 1983. The district court granted summary judgment for the defendants on both counts. This appeal followed. Issue. Whether the defendant officers acted upon probable cause and in any event acted within the scope of their immunity. Holding. Because the court agreed with the district court that the defendant officers acted upon probable cause and in any event acted within the scope of their immunity, they rejected Mustafa's argument that summary judgment was improperly granted and affirmed the ruling of the district court. 
reasoning. Mustafa was indicted on a charge of felony disorderly conduct, bomb threat, but acquitted following a bench trial. The statute under which Mustafa was charged applies to any person who transmits or causes to be transmitted in any manner to another a false alarm to the effect that a bomb is concealed in such place that its explosion or release would endanger human life, knowing at the time of such transmission that there is no reasonable ground for believing that such bomb is concealed in such place. The statute applied to implausible and unconvincing bomb threats. 42 U.S. Code Section 1983 states, Every person who under color of any statute, ordinance, regulation, custom, or usage of any state or territory or the District of Columbia subjects or causes to be subjected any citizen of the U.S. or other person within the jurisdiction thereof to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured by the Constitution and laws shall be liable to the party injured in an action at law suit in equity or other proper proceeding for redress except that in any action brought against the judicial officer for an act or omission taken in such officer's judicial capacity injunctive relief shall not be granted unless a decla declaratory decree was violated or declaratory relief was unavailable for the purpose of this section any act of congress applicable exclusively to the district of columbia shall be considered to be a statute of the District of Columbia. Qualified immunity protects officers performing discretionary functions from civil liability so long as their conduct does not violate clearly established statutory or constitutional rights that a reasonable person would know about. A plaintiff seeking to defeat this defense in Section 1983 action must show first that the plaintiff's rights were violated Second, the plaintiff must show that the law concerning the plaintiff's asserted right was clearly established at the time the challenged conduct occurred. Finally, the court must determine whether a reasonably competent official would know that the conduct was unlawful in the situation he confronted. Here, Mustafa certainly had a right to be free from an arrest that lacked probable cause, and that right is clearly established so the only remaining question is whether a reasonable officer could believe that it was lawful to arrest Mustafa. Mustafa argued that it was unreasonable to believe she had committed a crime because her statement about a bomb was phrased as a possibility rather than a fact. Maybe I have a bomb in my purse. Because any reasonable person would have realized that she was not serious and because she did not actually frighten or convince anyone that she had a real bomb. However, even if we accepted this argument, this would not disturb the defendant's qualified immunity defense. As discussed already, the Illinois statute at issue applied to implausible and unconvincing bomb threats. At the time of the arrest, the application of the bomb threat statute to circumstances involving jokes, sarcasm, etc. was perhaps arguable. A court might theoretically read a limitation into the statute and apply it only to credible or convincing bomb threats. But where the law is open to interpretation, qualified immunity protects police officers who reasonably interpret an unclear statute. Reviewing courts must ask whether X is a crime under the statute that the police arrested the plaintiff for violating. If the answer to that question was unclear when the arrest was made, the police are entitled to their immunity. Here, the most Mustafa could plausibly claim, according to the court, was that the criminality of her conditional statement was unclear. No case clearly established that implausible threats fall outside of its reach. Furthermore, even if no reasonable person could have believed that Mustafa had made a genuine bomb threat, the officers might reasonably have believed that Mustafa had committed the closely related offense of non-specific disorderly conduct under the statute which covers any unreasonable activity which alarms or disturbs another and provokes a breach of, of the peace. It was undisputed that Mustafa disturbed employees at the airport and that a noisy confrontation ensued. Officers may arrest individuals suspected of any crime, 
The fact that Mustafa was prosecuted under only the bomb threat section of the disorderly conduct statute does not mean that she could only properly be arrested under that section. Thus, the officers are protected by qualified immunity, and the district court's ruling in their favor was affirmed. Now I conclude with this question. Should we profile people passing through airport security? <laughs>